Hello again, this is UML Operator. Hello, in this session, we are going to be talking about Spark CA Legends and how legends can be used in your modeling, your diagrams, and telling your story. In most, if not all, tooling, and we're in the toolbox for class elements, let's minimize some of these. If you go into common elements, you're going to see diagram legend. Just simply drag and drop, hold down the left mouse button, bring it out, and you can start building it. We're going to double click on it, and you get this dialog box that pops up. Move it next to it here, and you can give it any name you want, and then you can start defining the elements, the legend elements, and the legend connector, colors, and layout. And as you know, you've got a help key here. You can select this. Let's go ahead and cancel and show. You're going to launch the Sparks Help for Legend. You Basically, from the welcome, you're going to Fundamentals, Model Diagrams, Legends, and you're going to land on this. But if you select Help key, you'll get there. So we're at the Legend tab here. You can click on, if you want to read ahead, Creating a Legend, Legend Properties, and Legend Key. And this is some of the material we're going to talk about in this session. All right, let's double click this and open up the properties again. You can name your legend here. And we're going to create a legend on, I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm going to call this a status legend. Right? And I'm going to hit OK. And now we just changed the name of this. Now I'm going to hit Save to save it. So what I mean by status, so let's go to Settings, Model Types. We're going to General Types. You'll see that we've got some status here. Approved, implemented, mandatory, proposed, and validated. So we're going to try to use the same colors for our legend as these status elements that you see here. So I'm going to go ahead and close, double click, open this up. And we're going to start at item details first. And then we'll come up and talk about this uh, stuff at the top and we'll go between elements and connectors. Although for status, there's not a status on connectors, but we'll look at that and we'll talk about that. So we'll go back to element tab here, and we're gonna start with value. We'll talk about display value in just a moment, but I always start with value. This is what is used for data analysis. This is what's used for numeric references, which usually are, if you, human readable, like if you had an alphanumeric reference or numeric reference based off of your governance, you would use value. And then something more human readable would be display value, but I'll get to that in a moment. So let's just type the first one in. We're not going to be using values approved. And we're not going to give it a color yet. We're going to hit save. We're going to hit new. We're going to type the next one, which is implemented, if I remember correctly. Hit save, hit new. Come up here, and the next one was mandatory propose. Man, I'm going to guess mandatory. Right? It's save. If you get them out of order, you want them in an order, you can use these arrows, up and down arrows here. See, I moved mandatory up one, and I can't do that. So it's telling me I'm at the top. So I'm, I'm moving it down. So I moved it back down. Right? So I don't need to save because I just changed the order on this one. So we're going to add proposed, hit new, new, hit go ahead and save. So I'll keep getting that. Uh, proposed, save, new, and then validated. Validate or validated? Validated. And hit save. Let me hit OK. So we don't have any colors in here, but we've built the basic framework for our status legend. All right, let me just double check. I'm still on settings, model types, general types, approved, implemented, mandatory. Yep, they're in the right order. And we'll figure out the colors. The first color we're going to be using for approved is blue and a dark gray, orange, yellow, which is going to be a little tough, but we'll look at that, and validated. And you'll understand what I mean by when you're using colors, sometimes you got text inside default layouts and you want to keep them readable. So I'm going to go ahead and close. So I wrote down those colors, know what they are, let's get started. So we're going to double click, we're going to go to approved, we're going to go to fill color, fill color. 
and it was blue. So we're just gonna choose this blue right now. Might want it a little lighter. So this one's a little lighter. Let's hit save and let's look at it. All right, that works. And uh, the next one was a dark gray. So implemented uh, fill color, not line color. We're gonna leave the line color. Let me go out of here. We're gonna leave it black or default, right? That's the line that's around the legend element, all right? I'm gonna go ahead and populate the rest of these and I'll be right back. All right, I'm at the last one, validate, hit the downer on the fill color and it was a green. We're gonna go with this one and see what it looks like. Hit okay now. Now we have our colors in here. I have an issue with the yellow one, but let's look. We're going to look at that in just a moment. We just got some colors to get us started. We're going to double click this again and open up the properties. So at the top here, and if you read ahead in the sparks, you see apply auto color. We're going to want to click that, check that on. You'll see that these boxes apply fill will apply these fills and styles, right? And we're not going to, we're going to leave it one pixel in the line. We're just focused on fill color. All right. Connectors. We're not going to do connectors, but I'll talk about it near the end. All right. So we got elements. We're going to apply auto color and you'll see that in just a moment. Let's go ahead and hit OK. Let's uh, save and uh, let's move to the next part. Now for this next part, let's bring in a class element we're going to use for testing. Don't bother naming it. If I double click it up there, you've got status and you've got the approved, implemented, mandatory, proposed, and validate. All right, so we're going to leave it on proposed to start and go ahead and click that. Now we're going to double click and open up the legend again. We've got apply auto color. You see where it says filter? We want to come in here, hit the triple dots and element. We'll talk about tag values in another video, but element and we're on status. So the element status, right? Hit it double. If you want to change it, you can build a legend around any of these, but we're going to use status. Okay. So let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and hit okay. Um, you see where it applies to? I have it on all. I'm going to leave it on all. We have a class element here. You could apply this to specific element types you've got certainly plenty to play with that are, that are here but we're going to leave it on all to use this legend against all and i'll talk more about that in a moment we're going to go ahead and hit okay yes save you see it auto colored this based on its status of proposed so let's go to properties over here in the lower right we're going to go to status let's change this to implemented change this dark gray mandatory Change it to that color of orange we chose. Proposed, that light yellow, validated. So this is how you can use status to auto color your elements. Let me go ahead and hit save. What we're going to do now is if we remove the status, everything goes back. I'm sorry, this legend, everything goes back to its default color. So I'm going to control Z, bring it back. So this legend must be in the diagram you want to apply auto coloring to, all right? So I hope that makes sense to you. Next, let's talk about display value. In display value, you see we've got a value of approved. I'm gonna double click this, control C, copy, and paste it right here in display value. Now, if I have a value like A1 in there or just one in here, I'm gonna hit save and then hit okay you see that the display value is approved, which we typed in here. Let's go over to this element over in the lower right, and I'm gonna change this to approved. It didn't pick up the colors, right? So you, this tells you that, let me double click on this, open up the properties again. It's driving, it's applying the auto color based off of the value that's in here. And I'm going to go ahead and paste back in approved, hit save, hit OK, and it's applying the color. So the value is what is used to apply the auto coloring, not the display value. You can give this anything that you want that's human readable. 
this display value and it will be displayed here in your legend. And you may come across several reasons why you want to do that. And I'll talk about that in later videos, especially when we get to tag values being used as the filter for elements. All right. So real quick, let's talk about uh, connectors. So I'm going to bring in another class element. We'll go ahead and leave it proposed color, draw an association, and then let's open up this dialog box for association. So you'll see that there's no status for associations. So it won't work in this particular case. However, when we get into the conversation around tag values, we can add tag values to associations and pretty much anything in UML. So let's say we've got a style for an association. Let me go to layout. We're going to make this two pixels. Could make it more. I'm going to make the line color uh, blue, a little darker blue. There we go. And then what we're going to do is we're going to double click on legend here and we're going to go to connectors and in connectors, uh, it's already on a new one. So what we're going to do is we're just going to say approved and then we want to use, I think it was this darker blue, two pixels. So if we were using to auto drive the coloring for a value of approved and when we get to uh, tag values, you're going to see this in action, but you're gonna have to wait for the next video. I'm going to hit save the your connector colors in your legend will start to line up and show at the bottom. All right. So I'll talk more about this when we get to the tag value legend driven legend. And I look forward to that conversation. Once you create this legend, you can reuse it throughout your project. Often I create patterns around legends and I can apply legends to models on demand. But I'll talk more about that in another video. In another, in a previous video, I show you how to create patterns. We'll, we'll touch on patterns again later, but you can make this as a pattern so that if I go to uh, browser resources, patterns, model patterns, I have legend status, this one right here. Let's go ahead and double click it. So I have a pattern here. I can drag and drop into a model, but I'll do that in just a moment. Let's go here. What we're going to do is we're going to select this legend. We're going to hit control C to copy. We're going to go to this diagram here and we're going to hit shift insert. The reason I'm using shift insert is that it's not in the same package as this diagram. So if I go find this diagram in the browser, it went right to it. I don't have this legend there. I have it somewhere else in my project. It picked up the legend. It applied the auto coloring to the items that are in this model for status approved, implemented, mandatory, proposed and validated. So you can see what's proposed. Your readers can see that just simply by adding this legend to your model, right? It'll bring that in. So I hope this video was helpful for you. We'll talk more about this when we get into the next video, which is going to be on using legends and tag values to automate, apply various visual aids to your customers, your model viewers, your modelers, and your collaborators. Thanks very much for watching this, and I'll talk to you all later. Happy modeling.